In this video, we'll take a few minutes to look at the laminate strength analysis in Hyperworks Integrated Composite Stress Toolbox. When you're working with laminates and the corresponding zones and elements, uh, you're often interested in getting kind of ballpark figures about what load levels are um, allowed. And also, if such loads occurred, where would the laminate actually be failing? And that's exactly what the strength analysis can provide you. So you first pick your entity of interest and then combine it with the first play failure criterion, for example, just the simple max stress or max strain, but also any others from the list. And then you run the strength analysis and it will provide you with uniaxial loads, critical uniaxial loads to be more precise um, for your laminate. So, as in here, you can see the critical loads for tension and compression in, uh, in X and Y direction, uh, the shear loads, out of plane, bending moments, even twisting moments, and all the corresponding values then also in terms of stresses or flexural stresses, strains, curvatures. Let's start with opening a model file. In our case, it's a very simplified wing model. And when we open the composite browser here from the model ribbon, we can see our composites related contents. I'll just go and isolate our two laminates here. So now we can only see the laminates. And we can also go through and see the different plies with their different shapes um, if we want. On the material sections, we have two different carbon materials here. Both of them have stress-based allowables. And then we also have a honeycomb, which uh, the main interest is in, uh, in outer plane shear, obviously, in the sandwich. And this one also has additional data, so outer plane shear allowables and an E3, because that's not available straight away from the MAT8 card. Whenever you create a first by failure method, um, the, uh, uh, this metadata section will become available for you, so you can add those uh, as you need them. Now, as mentioned, for a strength analysis, we will need first by failure criteria defined, so let's start with creating such here in the model. And we'll make it very simple. We just call it max strain and pick uh, failure criteria accordingly. The result levels um, don't matter in the strength analysis here. We always take uh, free recovery planes per layer, so that uh, is not of concern for this analysis. And also the design margins are not uh, important because our results are actually showing the critical loads. Now, if we go into the materials here and pick the ones for max strain that are of our interest. We are basically already set and done. If you wanted to pick uh, other ones additionally, then you're free to do so. And then the analysis will internally calculate all of the failure uh, criteria uh, applied to a particular material and then pick the most critical one for the analysis. So next step would be creating the actual analysis. In this case here, we'll name that one strength max strain. And uh, then we'll pick the analysis type. Here you have the choice between engineering contents, load response, and strength. So strength is the one that we need. And we can pick the laminates here from the right side. You could as well pick elements, so that's the second option that you have there. But for this demo, let's go with the laminates, and then assign our max strain failure criterion. Running this gives you, first of all, the uh, analysis name, uh, the result type. In this case, there's only the, the tabular results, and the selection on the left for the uh, areas of the laminate in this case, and in the bottom, the selection of results that are shown. So 
if I switch those on and off here, those are going to be um, basically hidden from the view. It starts on the right side with our lambda data. Here, uh, ID, name, the actual sequence. If I move here, you can see that sequence and thickness are changing as well as the number of layers. And then we find our actual result sections where we uh, see the critical uniaxial loads. In our case here, an X intention, an X compression are uh, the same. And uh, we can also see that 1T here stands for it's failing in fiber direction. So 1 is fiber direction, 2 is transverse to fiber direction, and T stands for tension. <coughs> and the critical ply is ply number 13. So we would immediately know uh, ply number 13 is this one here. So it's actually the first ply that's, that's failing here. Um, if there are several plies that are equally critical, um, it's always going to show the first one where this shows up. Um, yeah, then below that we can also find the, the moments, so the bending cases and uh, then corresponding stresses, uh, flexural stresses, the in-plane strains, and also uh, the curvatures. Okay, now let's do the same thing and uh, run our originally defined set of failure criteria. So I'll just take this one here, duplicate our analysis, lambda selection stays the same, and I will just change to the uh, mixed set of first ply failure criteria. Now, running the second analysis, we will see that uh, we get, due to the different selection of failure criteria, in this case including PUC, um, that we'll see failure mode that is called FFT, that is fiber fracture in tension, and FFC for fiber fracture in compression. But we also see inner fiber fracture, and the values here in parentheses actually um, show the angle of the fracture plane. What we haven't seen before also is wrinkling. And uh, now this zone 3 with the name here um, has the sandwich construction. So it has the honeycomb core in the middle. And we can see for which of the uniaxial loads uh, we will actually get uh, problem with wrinkling uh, here at the top and for the other ones at the bottom uh, face sheet. Another interesting feature is the possibility to just swap between analyzers like I did now and uh, when doing so you can easily compare the numbers from one set of failure criteria to another. In this specific case as in max strain we didn't define any failure criteria for the honeycomb, we'll see that for this zone we'll actually get a warning that some materials are not assigned to failure criteria.